Hey, it's the Chubby Bartender Podcast with your host, Jason Gillum and Chad Reynolds. With special guest each week. Sit back, relax. And enjoy the show. Hey, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Tyler and Chad not not even with us tonight. So we got a whole fresh crew. Got old faithful Bo. Yep. What's up, Bo? Hey, I'm just lucky to be alive. Just lucky to be. Oh, well, yeah. I, I saw that when you came in. I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah. We got some guys we got to thank first. Uh, let's see. Hey, have you got the app yet for mine? I do. What do you think of that? That is the greatest thing. And I laugh every time I pull in there because you was like <laughs> wanting to keep it secret. So you had one of them pull in spots over there. <laughs> you can't get one now. Oh, is that right? Oh, whenever the chubby bar stender started talking about the app. Yeah. You can't get a parking spot down. Well, I've got one, and my wife's got one. So if we're both in the car, and like if I'm driving, she's she's ordering the food off of that oh, app and absolutely. stuff, and we pull right in there and How pick her right up. How many points you got? I don't even know that. <laughs> Top it, right. I, I'm so I'm so excited just to pull in there and not even have to go through the drive through. It's, it's well today I went through and Gibson wanted a six piece nugget and fries. Well, I had so many points, I got it all free. Is that cost right? me a dollar for a sweet tea. Wow. Yeah. I, I bet mine hates to hear that. I bet he does, too. Uh, I bet he does. Because uh, you, you just know put that. that mic it, put that mic up there. Yeah. You just know the Pudge is just racking up in points. Every for, day. For free money. But you're only allowed one deal a day. Oh, I you're see. You're only allowed one deal a day. So that's where he gets you. He gets you coming back. So, But, yes, yeah, so thank you, Brad Saraman of Jackson, yep. Oak Hill, Wellston, and MacArthur McDonald's. They do a lot for us. So, uh, And then, guess where I was? Friday. Uh, let me guess, Massey's house. I, uh, Massey's house, Massey's mansion. Oh, Massey's mansion. Well, <laughs> I mean, well you the, know. the compound. Yeah. Only guy I know the with compound. thirty acres in the middle of town. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's got more land than the county. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think there was a horse paddock back there, helicopter pad, yeah. all kinds of stuff. But Geiger Brothers Construction. If you guys need anything, uh, erect steel. Um, I tell you, I was at a retirement party for Geiger Brothers and. What a team that they have. I, I mean, I know we always talk about them and what they do, mm-hmm. but what a deal that uh, the Geiger Brothers Company put on for their retirees. Chuck Scott retired, Kevin Meredith, Tim Matchett. Oh, wow. Those guys all. And there was another guy I didn't know, Bob something. Well, congratulations to those guys. Yep, congrats, uh, Kevin, yeah. Tim, and uh, Chuck, and uh, the Young. You know, I, yeah. I, I don't know how old Tim is, but uh, uh, Kevin and uh, Chuck are probably, what, in their 50s. Yeah, yeah. I'd say, yes. So I'm sure they got their 30 in or whatever it is. Um, but wow, what a, what a great company that would be to work for. I saw several guys there that I knew, guys that I, you know, just local guys I know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like, oh, I didn't know you worked for Geiger Brothers. And they was like, man, I should have came here years ago. They yeah. were like, this is, they, they was like, this, this is great. They was like, these guys treat you like family. And well, I just hope Scott knows that I got 16 months to retire from the current job I'm at. And I'll be looking for work. Are you going go, go to try to do cut his grass? Uh, maybe. That would be a 40-hour week job. Right. I'm talking at his house. Yes. <laughs> yeah. At, at the mansion. You could have a full-time job over there picking up leaves. Sure. I'd take it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. So, uh, but thank you. Give them a call, 740-286-0800. Or look them up, Geiger Brothers Construction, on uh, the Google there. Who else we got? Who else we got? We got, oh, and uh, tell you where else I've been going. Uh-oh. AP Prep. Oh really? Yep. Took. I'm going over there tomorrow with Box with the old fatty at uh, oh, yeah. six o'clock. Yep. So uh, just you and him. I mean, nah, I charging it, admission or? Oh well, no. I told him. I said. I said. Let's just not do the heavy bags. Let's just spar. <laughs> and he did, he didn't want to do that. He didn't well. want to do it. But uh, that was Friday night. He'd had a few liquid courages. Oh, I he? see. Yeah. But uh, so AP prep. Uh, I tell you, man. I was very uh, Reynolds. And I talk about it all the time. But wow, took Gibson there. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable the way that they relate to kids yes. i mean and we're just going gibson just needed some exercise i mean we're not really going for anything he's actually been mountain biking a lot and so we're just trying to you know keep muscles fresh one day a week and uh met gabe griffiths mm-hmm. did it and uh man just unbelievable I, I just can't say enough about the experience yeah. it was just really cool it's a great group he's got over there. great group of guys yeah. i love their mission i love everything about those guys so uh, look those guys up at apprep.info or look them up at ap prep at facebook and ap prep at instagram and uh, the only other one left is me Gillum Insurance. Gillum Insurance. Yeah. So uh, life insurance, still hot this week, man. Every time COVID kicks up, so is life insurance. So yeah. wrote a million on uh, 
a guy the other day was as low as eighteen dollars a month, and I think he was forty one. Mm. Yeah, he's a year older than me, so he's forty one, forty, forty one. Eighteen bucks a month for a million. That's how cheap it is right now. Wow. And I mean, with the current COVID climate, it's too cheap not to get. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you know, we've. I think everybody now can say that COVID's affected him in some way or the other. Absolutely. And uh, ooh, lost that one there, didn't I? What I do? But uh, you know, so give us a call at Gillum Insurance. I would love to quote your life insurance, your home, your auto, your life, and your business. Seven four zero three nine five zero three five seven or Jason dot Gillum at American Hyphen National dot com. So I think that's it. We got anything else we need to cover? Uh, oh, no. we got a guy here with us today. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Could you smell the barbecue? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, this guy here. Okay. I don't know that I've ever heard barbecue raved about in my life until I saw this Smoking Butts barbecue at Jeep and for Joy. And everybody was raving about your brisket and your ribs. Now, I'm, I'm a rib guy, and the ribs were the best I've ever had in my life. Awesome. So, outstanding. Welcome to the Chubbies. Cheers. Yes. Thank you guys yeah. for having yeah. us. Hey, no problem, man. I thought, we got to talk to this guy. I know nothing about barbecue. <laughs> so you give me the journey, man. So you got Smoking Butts Barbecue in Oak Hill. Yes. Okay, yes. and you're looking looking for spots, maybe you know in other towns or whatever. You're, so, you're, yeah, you're we mobile don't, right We now. definitely definitely don't want to restrict ourselves to Oak Hill. Um, we definitely want to get out and move around uh, to get everybody having a piece of you know our food that we serve mm -hmm. um we're excited to be in oak hill we do love oak hill mm -hmm. um, but we definitely like to to move around and meet all the new folks mm -hmm. that that are that experience in our barbecue um been doing it for a long time don't Where even you from? know originally from ironton ohio okay oh, well. all right moved up to columbus that's, that's for a little bad while this week yeah, it's a bad, bad week to be from ironton. <laughs> <laughs> i mean not to interrupt not to interrupt game. did you see that wow i did not I wow. Did the ironton jackson game i did not it's on watch. espn I did not see it. Ironton beat us with one, right one point four <laughs> seconds. Wow! Did Did you play ball at Ironton? By any I case? did not. You no. did not. Nope. Did you go to Ironton High School? I went in Thomas Worthington High School. Thomas Worthington. Thomas Worthington that's, up in Worthington, Ohio. I say that's in Columbus. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So what, when did you go to Ironton? Uh, back when I was seven, eight years old, we left. Oh, okay. We left Ironton and moved into Columbus. Uh, okay, oh, gotcha. So, yep. All right. So you was at Thomas Worthington. So, yep. so uh, how did you get into this? Bar how long have you been barbecue? So you know, just uh, sitting at home, cooking out with your buddies, hanging out, you know, drinking beer, doing the thing, and uh, just kept telling me, Jay, you cook awesome barbecue. Yeah. And uh, it's always been on the back burner, you know, wanting to do something. And I felt like the Lord's just kind of pushed me in this direction to, to, to maybe reach somebody that might need touched and, mm -hmm. and to, who don't like to eat good barbecue. He touched my belly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. I, had, I had some at the, the Jeep and for joy. It was excellent. Oh yeah. You said I mean, it excellent. just melted in your mouth and it the did. ribs just fell off the bone. Just, and they were so good. So, good. so you started off doing this, just drinking beer part, not partying. I don't want to say party, yeah. but just, you know, at a party, you would, to say hey yeah. i'll cook you know, yeah hey, so yeah jay just, grilling just hanging out to the house you know have people over uh, on a weekend friday or saturday night and just go out and start you know start smoking doing our thing i and usually then, do the uh, same thing then it just turned into <laughs> <laughs> turned into you know buddy would ask me hey can you cook me a pork butt or can you do this for me mm -hmm. can you do that and and it's just been you know something that i wanted to pursue for such a long time and uh i just kept having that fear and finally i uh I asked the Lord to, to guide me where he wanted me to be, and he gave me the strength to, to make the jump, and we did. We both quit our full-time job, my wife and I, um, and this is what we do. Uh, and did you move to a kill to do this, or were you? Uh, so, no, my wife's uh, grandmother had passed. Okay. Um, we had been coming down for the last three years to help her maintain the home, and um, so we kind of took over the family home there in Oak Hill. Okay. And uh, so it was a decision to go back to Columbus every day to go to work or – you know do something yep. different and kept praying and praying and this is where it put me this is where it put you so why did you what got you into cooking did you did you always cook yeah so i've always loved to cook um just at home cooking dinners mm -hmm. you know and just when you cook for your family you know, you always you feel good when somebody says man this is delicious or mm -hmm. jay jay you can cook and then you know you take stuff into your work buddies and your co-workers mm -hmm. and things and jay did you really make this you know yeah but that's 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 me and yeah. uh, it just make you feel good. And mm -hmm. you, you guys are at home when you guys are doing your own thing. You know, sure. you're taking pictures of things. And, yeah. yeah, man, it feels good. You know, it's manly stuff. Just something that you know, makes a man feel good yeah. about. So, um, you know, who don't like to cook? 
yeah. yeah barbecue you know so so i know that like when you're smoking stuff i mean it takes hours for it to get to the final result yes right? yes it so does. how many times did you get to that final result before you got to had it perfected that you was like oh, i need to i need to do this or i need to do that yeah that's a great question um so i burnt a lot of brisket <laughs> to, get to, um, to get to where i'm at yeah. and every time um, you do that you're basically losing 40 to 80 dollars correct uh right now the price of brisket is really up there is so it? you're paying almost 5.99 a pound uh, okay. for brisket um when well, back before covid hit you're down to 3.99 a pound mm -hmm. so where's beef um, at now commercial beef you know that's that, I don't know where the commercial. Really that's like what hamburger I'm, meat. I'm saying. I, I I don't know. I don't buy a lot of hamburger Man, meat. Man, it was like six. I remember when COVID, whenever you first opened back up, it was like six ninety nine or six oh five a pound for just hamburgers. Yeah, ninety ten, eighty twenty hamburger. And then it got down back down to two twenty, two oh five somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah, I have I haven't bought a lot of hamburger lately. I've, I've been uh, the ribs are getting expensive. Uh, your pork shoulders are also mm -hmm. have went up from you you paying a dollar seventy pound. Uh, they're up to two ninety nine a pound. Okay. Um, so the price of uh, price of the meats have went up, but definitely burn a lot of brisket up before I could get it down to where I wanted it to to um, to be. Yeah. Um, I want to I want to go a step farther than okay. with that question. I want to know. Tell me about barbecue. What is okay? Everybody says I always thought barbecue meant like you know sauce, barbecue sauce. Like you know, just I I didn't I don't really understand what barbecue what what separates barbecue from grilled or or you know because then you throw in smoked does that mean barbecued or i mean so explain to me all that to me my meaning of barbecue is on a fire open fire in the smoke cooking you know cooking meats um barbecue to me is something that's not being touched by the fire itself so not grilling for, for say but being smoked is what i consider barbecue i don't particular do the pellet thing i don't consider that as you know something that i like to do or, what's the what's the pellet thing so there's a lot of pellet smokers out there a lot of you like know walmart version walmarts you know tractor supply those guys have yep. them um i've never ran one so i'm not very familiar with them but I'm a wood guy. I did tree work for a living for a long time. Um, so you're so, actually smoking with wood then? Like so we're hickory smoking. Or, yes, sir. Know, yeah, oh, yeah. So we use white oak, red oak, and hickory huh? are some of the woods that we use. Uh, the white oak or the red oak are for the heat, uh, and the hickory is just for a little bit of flavor. Flavor. I do like a dry wood. I like clean smoke. So, so dry what, wood. So tell me, okay, are you you're, I mean a seasoned? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so why? Because I thought I would have thought – Unseasoned would have gave you more smoke, or wet wood would have gave you more smoke. So it's too much. Yes, I, my particular experience with it is I don't want that smoke, that uh -huh. dirty wet smoke going into your proteins. It'll put that nasty taste in your mouth when you taste something that's all smoky and yeah, man, and, you, and it gets you a bad experience. Mm -hmm. um, you I just like burp it up for it, hours. Right, don't, yeah, right. There's, there's a such thing as too much smoke. I think so. right, yeah. correct, yeah. 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 So. so when our smoke is rolling, I like to see clean, clear smoke coming out of there, uh, and this, that's what I, I kind of aim for. Clear so. smoke. Clear, clean smoke. Okay. Describe me this. <laughs> is that is that clear smoke? That that so yeah. What you don't want to see is like that black, gritty, nasty, dirty looking smoke. You could kind of see it. You could also smell it um, from time to time. It, it will happen. Uh, you can open your cooking chamber up or do different yeah. things, move things to, around. You, so, like at my at home, I know you heat with wood, some don't you? Don't you have wood? Uh, I don't yet. You no, don't yet. No. But I heat my house with wood, and I can turn that. I can turn those dampers down, you right. know. And I mean, is your smoker the same way? Same way. You've got the chute that you know where the smoke comes out of. Uh -huh. Then you got your firebox on the side. You can open it up to allow more airflow From going in. From the bottom, going into the actual fire itself. Yep. Then you can close off the dampener that's where, where the, the smoke is. Yep. Where it's allowing the smoke to pour out. I leave mine wide open. All I of want, it? All of it. All of it. All, all of the it. time. So you'd have to be burning hotter. So I'm burning hot. So okay. my smoker runs at about 250. And on the brisket or the pork, it usually takes anywhere between 12 to 16 hours to cook so you've got um, your fireball so your meat never sees that high like booming ass heat right because your firebox is off to the side correct yep. and, and then that so that heat will just funnel right over to the chimney that's it and you'll lose a lot of it off 
off the actual unit to the side. Sure. So, oh, yeah. So where is it 250 on the meat? So it's going to be 250 inside the actual cooking chamber. So you got the heat coming in and then the, the smoke, if you will, where the heat is running through the meat and then out the chimney. So that heat is rolling across there. The reason why I cook mine or I keep my smoker running about 250 is because I have a smaller unit, a lot of, you know, a tinier unit. I don't cook a lot of meat at the same time. Give me an example. So how- I'll have four, four pork butts or pork shoulders, if you will. Okay. Uh, and two to three brisket on there at a time. Okay. Um, when I do ribs, I do about six to eight slabs of ribs at a time with those meats on there. So your day, like I, and I've, I've watched your social media. Um, seems like you have to, you're a day, not a day behind, but you always have to give your day, give yourself a day, don't you? Yes. So I cook today for tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm up at 6 a.m. Smokes are rolling today, putting the meat on. Yes, sir. Yep. We, for tomorrow's we, lunch. Crowd. For tomorrow's lunch. Yep. You have to cook it a day ahead of time. It's almost near impossible to cook today for today. Yeah. When your bigger meats, your your brisket and your you know your pork shoulders. Yeah. Now when your ribs and your your sausages and chicken and things like that, it's cooked today for today. Yeah. So your bigger meats, you always have to. But anything barbecued and smoked, you'd have to you'd have to wait. You do. It's nothing's going to come quick. Yeah. You know, barbecue is a, just a waiting game. Um, I never wrap our ribs. That's another thing that it's huge. Uh, I think it's a plus for what we do. Um, I don't never put foil on them or anything like that. I let them go until I know when they're done. I check the fold in the rib. What I mean by that is you take your tongs and lift them up. If they got a nice bend in them, they're done. If they're picking up straight where it's kind of the whole rack is leading off, then they're not done yet. Um, so that's something that I do a little different. A lot of people wrap their ribs or put them in foil or butcher paper or whatever, you know, so I leave them wide open. That, huh. that comes with experience, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, we burn up some ribs yeah, too. I, I've been like, yeah, I don't know if that's done or not, you know, so... Yeah, a lot of people use thermometers. Um, I, I do use thermometers uh, to gauge my temperature. Um, I do wrap my brisket and my pork shoulders uh, at a certain temperature when they reach that, and I do put them back on there until they reach another temperature, and then I pull them. And then I have a, what they call a warming cabinet or a holding cabinet, and I keep them at 165 degrees through the evening and then, you know, being served. Yeah. The following day. And that's, I mean, that's, that's barbecue. That's barbecue. Yeah, that's barbecue. Yeah. So, tell me about the prep, though. So, I mean, this this is what about that business that's always blown my mind. Tell me about the prep. So, you're getting. I mean, how are you working out? Like, how how do you even control a food truck in your business right now? So it's very tough. Um, Has we, to be. We buy local, but we buy every other day. Okay. So I'm not. My meat never touches the freezer. Okay. So when we bring it in, it's bring it brought in fresh. I never have the meat longer than three days. So I, I buy enough what I know that I'm going to cook for that next morning. I buy it that night, cook it the next morning. It's being sold the following day. Yeah. And, it, you know, every time that we've been open, we have been blessed to be sold out every time. That's awesome. Um, we do go home with a little bit of meat every now and again. Yeah. So sure, sure. I feed the neighbors. Neighbors, yeah. Kinda, <laughs> yeah. they, they, they get after me it's like, Jay, you got that daggone smoker rolling again. And yeah. You're killing us over here. I, I mean, I don't know it. You know, coming from a little bit of the restaurant business, I just, man, you have to love it, don't you? I absolutely do love it. Yeah. And I, I've talked I love, to you enough. I think I, I can tell you do love it. I mean, because you're prepped, so you're getting, so are they delivering? You got to, so you, or do you have to personally go get this? No. So I personally go shop. Um, I go get the meat. Then in the following morning when I'm out getting the smoker ready, so I'm getting the fire going in the smoker. And as that, I'm doing the trimming of the uh, brisket, getting that pre- you know, prepped to get it on the smoker, uh, doing the rub down on the pork shoulders, putting those things together, and getting everything done. So, How long, how long does one, one pork shoulder take to prep? Uh, pork shoulders are pretty quick. I mustard them down, and then I put we make our own rubs. Uh, so I put our rub yeah, on it. You got into the rub business now. Oh, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, these are, these are for you guys. Got some koozies. Oh, we're not anywhere near done. I'm just I'm gawking. Here. But uh, yeah. yeah, these are some rub. That's so that's the brisket rub that we got there, and this is our pork rub. Um, I use that on the porks, the ribs, uh, and Let's our chicken as well. Let's see if it works. Man. <laughs> so you're putting. So okay. So that that's another question I have. So are all smoking meats products going to have the same 
flavoring or what are you? I mean, not flavoring, but are you using the same rubs and the same spices for all your red meats? And you got a chicken one, or how's that? Uh, so all of our brisket is going to be used with that salt, that spice there. That's our brisket rub, and what that is is just salt and pepper. Um, I don't believe any brisket needs anything else other than that. Brisket is a beef product. Uh, it's just like your steak. I don't put nothing else on my steak other than salt and pepper anyway. Mm-hmm. I like it, um, So, um, but yeah, that's what we do there. On our pork, our ribs, which is all pork product, you know, that's our pork rub. And I started using this. Uh, we do also smoked bologna, which again is wow, yeah. pork, pork um, which has been very popular. We've been very <laughs> very happy to get a lot of bologna out there a lot of people like it but you, but, uh, you smoke that in a big chunk correct uh no actually uh, we buy it by the loaf and i slice it about three quarter inches thick oh. go through the whole life so the whole loaf will put out about 12 to 13 slices and then i individually rub it down with a little bit of pork rub yeah. and then that's it i let it smoke for about two to three hours and it rocks out mm. and it's uh it makes for a mean sandwich oh yeah oh, i imagine yeah so, the, like the ribs, then that whenever I had them, they weren't a dry rub rib, but they weren't like I hate nothing. I hate any worse. Now some people like it, and I mean, there's no right or wrong answer, but I don't like to fish my stuff out of yeah. sauce. You know, I don't mind a little bit of sauce, but whenever it's just, I mean, that's just mess. Who now? I'm. You, do you like it the other way? You like a little? No, I know. I mean, I don't like a whole lot of sauce. I mean, yeah. I mean, I like enough to give it a little flavor if I yeah. need to. Yeah. You know, but not getting on your shirt. No, not yeah. at all. And like, like with a steak. Yeah. If I need sauce with that steak, you're taking it back yeah. because I, I don't eat my right, steak right. with sauce. I don't either. So. And I know the salt and pepper on red meats. I mean, all the good ones that I've ever known have said salt and pepper is all you need. Yeah. Yeah. If you're putting rub on a brisket, you're, you're, to me, you're not doing it right. Are you a rookie you know? or are you just not doing it right? I, I don't think – it could be a rookie mistake. It could. Okay. Or you could be just trying out something new. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, my experience with the brisket, I, I've cooked – quite a bit of brisket in my my being um salt and pepper is all you need yeah. I, I spritz everything with apple cider vinegar um i do that while it's on the cooking chamber i do that before the brisket's being cooked i, I spritz it down and then i apply my salt and pepper rub on it and then that's all i do you know and that's how it's cooked man i you would have because that that you start at 6 a.m today so then you so then are you done or you got work to do tonight for you there's going to be a little bit of work you know this evening that i've got to still do um and then just preparing myself. Um, I'm very particular about my wood. So even though it is split, I split it down a little bit further. You bunch the um, chunks. I, I, I take a two-pound sledge with a two-pound wedge, and I bust it down to about three-by-three three sizes, four-by-fours. Yourself? Fours. Yes, sir. You're doing this same cooking? <laughs> yeah. I sit there in the chair watching the fire and just splitting wood and, you know, just enjoying myself. Yeah. Um, that's that's why, you know, I, I love what I do, and, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what's, that's what's so fun about it. I can tell. I can tell that he likes sweet because at the jeeping thing, I mean, and it was so hot, and he's over there by a fire, <laughs> you know. And I mean, he was smiling the whole time, and even I was miserable. I was like, "Man, it's so hot," you know. <laughs> but he stayed happy the whole time. It definitely. Did you, have, did you have fun at that? I did. We had a blast. Um, we were very thankful that you guys invited us out there. We did have a great time. Um, we look forward to being back there next year. Mm-hmm. You know, if we get, if you guys are going to have us out there again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll uh, but the people out there were outstanding. Everybody was out there just so thankful when mm-hmm. that they had food. I think yeah. um, the last couple of years. That, We've never had that. And there was no food. So the, they were very happy. Yeah. Um, people loved it. Uh, we sold a couple of T-shirts out there, a couple yeah. of rubs, a couple of koozies. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah everybody think, was just raving about the food, you. man. They were just raving about it. That's it was, wonderful. Yeah. they. Uh, I'd say, you know, how, what? your focus then on trying to get your name out because i mean i I don't mean this in a bad way i you know i just didn't i don't know much about it because i haven't seen it yet how long have you been in business so we've been in business now about six months okay so you're fairly new so we're fairly new to it um i'm trying to blast social media as much as i possibly Mm -hmm. can i've realized you got to spend money Yes, you got to. You, if you are a business page, yes, and you naturally, I did a little, I did a little cost thing for on the Jeep event, and I spent some money in Columbus, and uh, honestly, it paid off. Yeah, we. I haven't spent much money on different business marketing, as much as probably you would have spent yeah. on it. Um, I'm trying to market with shirts, hats. Or rubs, that sort of stuff. Referrals um, would be, you know, referrals of has been a huge thing. Um, we do do catering, so mm-hmm. we, our catering side of things have really taken off for us. 
um, we've been very blessed to get a lot of you know a lot of people uh, ordered. Hey, you just did Holzer the other day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've a uh, great group of people there um, out in Gallipolis. Uh, we were at the guest house um, with physicians uh, appreciation night okay. for those guys, and uh, we were very thankful to be there. And yeah. everybody there seemed to love the uh, love the barbecue and love yeah. what we were doing. So yeah, I mean that's and that's going to be the hardest thing. I mean, I mean small town business. I told you about it, so today. I was telling him before you walked in. I was at a, a, a very, I won't mention any names, but I was at a uh, restaurant out, old, uh, out by me, okay? <laughs> you know where that's at. Mm-hmm. And they were shut down today in all my life, or in the last 12 years since I've lived out there. They're usually closed on Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I felt so bad for them because today I went in there and I was like, hey, where is everybody? I mean, I'm there every day. Mm-hmm. And I said, where is everybody? And they said, three of them, bud, walked out. They had to shut her down today. That was you know, not enough people. And and you said that there was a department store in Oak Hill that yeah. had the same problem. Yeah. Same problem. They were like, you know, they, they had what, four people, you said? I, th- I think it was four. I'm not sure how many. But, yeah, they've been closed down four or five days. Um, you know, just can't can't find help. I wonder why that is. We, I mean, even you. I'm, I'm not necessarily going through it right now. And help yeah. Bo's, he's laid up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, how are you handling that? Right now, you've got friends and family help. Yeah, right now, um, it's just me and my wife and my mother-in-law. She's very helpful with everything. Mm-hmm. She's all, She wants to be involved. Um, so, you know, we just rocking it out with us. And yeah. um, we've been, you know, just been happy doing it. And I know as we grow, we're going to be – probably you know experiencing those difficulties and and hiring and you know hiring people and trying to find help but the way you were talking about this and i we won't talk about it now until you're actually ready to do it you know but uh well after the show we'll have to talk about the uh the way he's wanting to set it up to where how you you know how you come in and and do it i mean it's it's genius idea uh because it'll it'll help with that yeah um labor force issue and it seems like right now everybody's having this labor issue yep what do you why, why do you guys think that is? What do you think? I, I honestly can't. I don't. I don't know. I can't figure it out. You know, and that's the, the thing that you see so many businesses out there. I think there was something on there about ninety thousand some jobs that are available right now, and it's crazy that you know that people are still. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if they're in fear of the the COVID and what's going on or what or what it well, is. But, here, let me ask you, you this: know. and we are all three of us. This is a very poverty stricken area, right? So. Do you so I would say our unemployment number should if if you would just randomly ask, I'd say everybody'd say, Oh, these are you know, yeah, nobody's working. You know anybody not working? You know anybody looking for a job? I don't. You? Not right now, I don't. <laughs> no. I think we're out of people. I mean, I'm not trying to be that guy, but I'm just like, hey, I don't, I don't really. I mean, I went to Walmart tonight, and uh, there was Brett Carroll's son loading me up, and I was like, man, I was like, I'm, I was like, he's working. I was like, that's great, you know. And, and I was like, I, everybody's working that I know, you know. And I, yeah. I mean, it was just like, there, there's jobs out there. Everywhere. I don't know anybody. I don't know that it's a problem of people aren't working. You know, I uh, think it's that people might not be working like in the jobs that we need them but they're working i mean you like a you like an 18 year old how are you jay how old i'm 42 I'm, for, I'm 40 okay and bo's he's like 72 <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're 49 right i'm 49 49 so i mean all of us do you understand what a kid makes right now like let's just say that you're a 18 20 year old cat again okay then go to college, but you're just, you know, like I was, you know, and you was. I don't know. I don't know you back then, Jay, but I know me and Bo, we just kind of entered the work world. Did. Okay. <clears throat> you know what you could make like out on these pipelines and you got cats knocking down 150, 160, dollars yeah, And look at all the government contracted work right now that's out there. Yeah. And I mean, versus hometown factory work here you know i mean dude if i was 18 years old right now i'd go be getting my welding certificate and i would go make big money yeah and that's the thing a lot of a lot of the kids nowadays are not turning to the colleges because there's a lot of college college graduates that are out there i have got all of this money that they owe for these educations and they can't use their degrees to do anything i just went to a retirement party friday and i'll uh, put i'll put those cats income versus 
ninety yes. percent of the college graduates I know. Sure, I mean, they're, and they're retired. Yeah, and it's hard work too. I mean, what they these earned guys it. Do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They earned it. Yeah. They've worked through winter times yeah, and summer right. times. Man, I mean, how yeah, fucking hot is it right now? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's been the hottest. I it's, think it's either I'm getting soft or this is the hottest hot. I've ever remembered it. So I, I've been off work with my hip, you know, for mm-hmm. the last seven weeks or something like that. And I told a guy the other day, I was like, I don't. I hope I don't have to go back to work till it start, starts cooling off. You know, <laughs> that I'm has to hurt you. October or something. That yeah. has to, the heat has to hurt your business. It, 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 you know, when I'm cooking wise, you know, the whole smoker is made out of metal, so that does. You know, I don't Great. use as much wood, so it's keeping it hot. But it, it does affect people coming outside some, uh, or coming to pick up food right here. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, we took uh, we went out to uh, Raceway Thirty Five last night, um, and had a good good night out there. I don't know Robert if you're from that one or Raceway Thirty Five out that? out just north of Jill, uh, Chillicothe. All in north of Chillicothe. North of Chillicothe. Uh, uh, Frankfort. Frankfort. Oh, oh okay, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, so yeah. Frankfort, Ohio. So uh, you catering all the way up there? Or just uh, set up. So we uh, sponsor uh, Nick Brunton and Pete Brunton. They're dirt track guys. Okay. Um, so we took some food out there to feed the you know the crew and the family. Yep. And just watching those boys get get dirty on that dirt track. Yeah. So we had a good time out there. But uh, the whole time, man, I, I tell you, it was hotter out there in the evening time than I was over top of that smoker all day Saturday. <sighs> boys, and it was hot. It was hot. It so was hot. hot. I thought I was in Florida man. for a couple of minutes there. I was like, I, what is going? On. <laughs> that's what I. I mean, am I getting? Is it just part of getting older? Am I getting softer? I mean, you're, you've been soft, but <laughs> see how he does it. <laughs> you're, you're not far off, right there. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm not lying a no, whole lot. No, no, I never claimed to be hard. Yeah. I have before. <laughs> actually a lot. But yeah, I mean, dude, I was out there. I had to cut. Uh, I'm finishing up my building finally. Yeah. <laughs> I was cutting steel yesterday, and I had to put on a flannel shirt, you know, because I was just metal all, everywhere dust gingers bud we, oh. we get in stuff like that we break <laughs> out and my god dude i was just it was just flying off of me sweat was just rolling down my leg my socks was soaked my shorts was soaked my shirts was soaked i mean i thought that i had to just go inside i was like hell with it i'm done <laughs> yeah i went to uh, uh an eighth grade football game at 10 o'clock in the morning down memford yesterday mm-hmm. and just being fat just was, sweat. I mean, just shirt off of that. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing. Well, you know, oh, I mean, that hits man. us guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're out yeah. there pouring sweat, and you look over and see yeah. the other guy. He's got a hoodie on, you know, yeah, next to you. Right. I'm oh. like, God, how are you got that thing on, right. dude? You're literally walking from the house to the car right now, and you're whenever you get inside, you're sweaty. I don't, yeah. you know, you got some sort of sweat right now. Yep. But it'll that'll that'll hurt you, a guy like you right now. It hurt the bar business whenever it was really nice. Now, like super hot was probably good because they didn't want to go sit up by fire. It's too hot. But as soon as it gets like fire weather, that yeah. always hurt the bar business. Versus, I think that'll help a guy like you. I think it'll yeah. help your business. You know, we uh, we're only set up right now three days a week: Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Outside of any type of events or big catering things that we might be doing so parties what times? or things so we're open at 10 a.m we're on the corner of 279 and 93 yep, you're right in front old, of piggly wiggly yes sir yep. right at the old foster's elect building yep. um so and then we go until we're sold out uh, and it's not very often we make it past 3 p.m i was gonna say i went down there yesterday at 2 30 was you yeah you was open yesterday yeah and i was there at 2 30 and you was already sold out then yes we were yeah. we sold out about pissed. 2 15 2 something like that right yeah. at 2 2 15 somewhere around yeah. there that's, that's good and uh, i know I, yeah, i'm not mad good. at him i was I, but i was pissed <laughs> yeah, you are. I mean, now, tell, tell him what you're <laughs> uh, but, but i ended up going to uh, okay. sandwich back for pudge <laughs> right right <laughs> but uh, you know oak hill's got a lot of uh Honestly, I, I was down there yesterday, and I mean, Oak Hill's just, it's its a nice place to, like, go down there and eat. Like, you know, I didn't have to worry about really seeing too many people that I knew, and I mean, it was I just enjoyed going down there, and I went down there to find you, <laughs> and I figured we'd talk about tonight or whatever, and then you were closed, and then you were sitting there whenever I came back by. I went and grabbed something, and then I came back by, and, you, and I was like, that must be where he's at. So I yeah. was trying to find you down there, but I just, I don't get down there that much, or if yeah. I do, it's to Bryant's. Yeah, you know, usually Jeff's got my dad Jeep, you know, four or five times every couple months. That's uh, a great, great group of guys. They do good work over there. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they've helped me out a lot with my smoker. Um, oh, so yeah. they've done some work for me, and they're, they're going to continue doing yeah. know, some of my stuff. You burn out those smokers people. a lot. What's that? Do you burn out those smokers a lot? Like I, on our smoke on our so on our fire tray, um, he built me a fire tray to where I put my fire a little bit higher up. I did insulate my box with fire brick. Uh, to you know, to help with temperature wise, I like consistent temperature, so that does help with that. But uh, the fire trays we burn out quite a you know quite a few times. Yeah. So. 
but other than the smoker unit itself we haven't had to replace any big metal or the thicker metal yeah. but it's just that little stuff that's on the side to keep our fire lifted up off so we can get some airflow underneath of it yeah Okay, so, so when you so I'm gonna get back to like so like on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays when you're cooking you got your food down there you got your food already prepped I guess when but so when you cook that the day before is that a, like a full rack on your cooker that you're running out of the next day I mean I, so I don't cook I, I, any the ribs are cooked that morning so I'm out oh, there okay. again the following morning bright and early out there cooking firing it up getting things your chicken your sausages your ribs those are all being cooked that morning oh I see. um so they take about four or five hours to you know to get yeah. right uh for the, you guys to come in and, and buy so we do sell them by the slabs we sell them by the dinners uh or the platters was what we call them um so you can get them either way uh sometimes i don't have ribs on me we do post on our social media smoking butts uh, barbecue uh, on facebook and we'll tell you uh, what we're having sides uh, meats, different meats, and things like that. So we'll post the day before what we're going to have the following day. I just, I was just trying to get. I, I didn't know how much meat you actually prepared for like one of your lunch days for the next day. So, so it, it just varies. Um, you know, we normally cook about four pork butts uh, for a day and two brisket is I what I put out. Yeah. Um, and then we go in with the sausages, uh, the chicken, the ribs, uh, the bologna. We'll do extra things like that. So we'll have all of that meat just depending on what wow. I'm cooking. Sometimes I'll do bologna, sausage, and ribs, and then the pork and the brisket. And, um, you know, it's very, like that's, I said, that's very, quite a bit. It's, I mean, it's a good, it's a good yeah. amount of, uh, you know, yeah. meat on the smoker. So Yeah, especially like during the weekday or something like that. You oh, know, he's so. working. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you're you're moving yeah. around a lot. I mean, I know everybody's like, oh, three days a week. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they see me three days a week true, on yeah, the street, true, but, but I'm you're, still you're, you're you're. I mean, that's six days worth of work, though. Yeah, I mean, from mm -hmm. what you're saying. Yeah, so, and Sunday's yeah. probably cleaning. Yeah, we do clean the smoker quite a bit. I, I uh, I'm very keen on trying mm -hmm. to keep a clean smoker. I know a lot of people they see when they look in, you'll see some of the black stuff on there, um, but that is that does help with flavor. It just like it anything does. else, it's kind of seasoning the, the the smoker, if you will. But uh, yeah, we do have to clean it out because all the the grease drippings and everything get down in mm -hmm. the bottom, so it is cleaned out weekly. Yeah, um, just getting that. I clean the racks about every two weeks. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, have you ever experimented with like different woods other than hickory? Like I, I've got a peach tree in my house i was getting ready to cut down yeah peach cherry cherry wood for some reason on chicken is absolutely phenomenal really if you ever get the opportunity to i mean do could you house. almost like uh like could you almost offer that as like hey like almost how they do like let's say paw paw beer yeah and say hey guys we got a group of ribs coming in been smoked by this 20 year old peach tree you know, could you do yeah. something like that, that? That's uh, that's something that um, because you're. I mean, I don't mean this in a bad wheel, way, but wheels you're, are turning. You're you're crafty enough with how your your whole smoking business and everything's done that, like that would be a nice little niche. Yeah. To do you know someday and say hey this Saturday you promote it two weeks we're going to be yeah. that meat all that meat that day will be smoked with this tree's wood. I mean yeah. So that's something that we've been pondering you mm -hmm. know been wanting to do there's a lot of different things that i want to do um i've been spending a lot of time just trying to get our name out there getting people to know who we are spend money our product yeah i'm definitely. telling you you're they will so. bury you like i've noticed that they will bury you if you don't spend money i mean you can go post on a personal page but i mean yeah. you know how it is it's no different than like whenever you, you're talking about we could say shiner bach beer and i guarantee you between the three of us somebody's cell phone just picked that up and you'll see a shiner bach in the next two three days no. you know what i mean it's the same way with that you know facebook's looking at all that info yeah and they're seeing that you're a business and i mean yeah. i think they're just burying you so yeah so far we've been blessed with what we've been doing our i mean i think we're almost to 700 followers six, yeah use it 682 i think whenever yep. i looked this morning so um i think just being six months new i could think be. that that could yeah. be not that couldn't be too bad but i'm not sure i don't know where you know where a typical barbecue business would sit at um i i try to pump out as much as i can um, you know, when I'm sitting there in between putting stuff on the smoker, you know, that, at late Split at night, eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, I'm sitting there doing that, putting my meat order order in for, mm -hmm. you know, sending sending the guy to my meat orders. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to put you know promote more uh, on yeah. the marketing side of things. Well, that's you know, I've, I've talked with different restaurant people before about this. You know, like in my insurance business, okay, I really can't just post anything i want to no no insurance company can now you'll see some insurance companies that are like um 
maybe more active on social media than others like you know especially like your your progressives and right. you know but i'm saying like your your small town insurance agencies some of them will be a little bit more active and usually it's your independent ones right because like if you're a captive if like with me i'm where i'm a i'm what they call a semi-captive agent i can't just post anything on social media everything that i post on social media i have to send to them through compliance and it has to go through a channel and then they post it so they like run my my stuff off of a different i log in through that and then that way that's our inner exchange yeah. e or website okay i've always thought you know like and and then I had it at the bar, I guess, to an extent. But I mean, man, you're free game. You can do whatever hell you want to. Yeah. Do. So that's all. I'm I'm definitely looking into to yeah. doing more marketing. Um, that's a valuable. Th I mean, everybody's like, "Why aren't you doing that?" Well, I can't. Yeah. You know, because like, like every like, if I had your picture on my thing, I would have. I have to submit a um, signed release form that you knew that I was putting you on social media. Mm. Um, and th this has all come about in the last two or three years. So, like a guy like you, I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, that's valuable just all in itself. Yes, it is. Yeah, that you can do anything like that. And, dude, and like I said, man, that Jeep thing, I, I spent like, dude, it was it was hardly nothing, like two hundred bucks. And uh, you know that Jeep thing, I think it was you that opened it up for us. Uh, we're going to be at the War X. Yeah, trilogy. Yeah, uh, in October, I think it's October second. Those guys mm -hmm. are going to put out a, an awesome show. So you, did there. he get with you, Jacob? Oh uh, yeah, he, he did yeah. contact us. So we're going to go ahead and set up out there with those guys, and we're excited. Um, Dude, and Bo, yeah. Bo knows those guys to an extent now, a little bit, a little yeah. bit. And yeah. I mean, yeah. what do you think I of them? Great guys, best. I'm I mean, I'm love the them, all of them. Yeah. And, and dude, that'll be. I mean, you have 500 people, probably easy. Yeah, I would think. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I would think that they're expecting 500. That's an all weekend event. And then here soon, we've got the Jeeper for Jackets coming up. Yeah, so that's yeah. going to be another cool oh, event. Yeah. Where um, are you setting up for that? I'm going to set up with uh, Jeff. At the, and, uh, and at Robbie, the thing? Yep. okay, yep. yep. We need so, to get that out there then on the on the page. I'll yeah. help Jeff with that. I'll, I I help with the Jeep for Joy page. Yeah. So uh, they asked us to you know to partake in that, and um, that's an exciting thing to to help the the kids in need. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, we're yeah, all Jeff for that. Good Definitely all. We had a good year, man. We uh we were down in Jeeps a little bit. Um, I think our quality of event was way up. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You know, did you think it was a quality event? The, uh, the Jeep and for Joy event was absolutely phenomenal. I thought it was great. I think well, um, that everybody that was that partaked in it uh, were were fun, yeah. um, outgoing. Uh -huh. You know, just everything. Everything about it was just it was a good time. And I didn't see and, anybody out of hand. No, absolutely no. No, I didn't. Everybody see was you know respectful. Everybody treated each other you know with kindness. Great, yeah. So it yeah, was, it was uh, a which great was a, time. which was a change. Okay, so like it was getting pretty wild. I mean, <laughs> don't you think? Well, I mean, from yeah, I mean, I, I personally never seen anything. I never saw anything bad. bad. Yeah. You just knew that it. Yeah. Could, I mean, I you mean, know, yeah. the level you, of you heard of a few people doing things, you know. Yeah. but I personally never saw. I anything. never saw anything either. Yeah. Nope. Uh, but, but the see, amount of jeeps that was out there was. I mean, just well, see, awesome. we were down in jeeps. Oh, were but you? before, like, we didn't charge everybody, right? Because we just everybody can come. Well, you know, I, I noticed last year I had to pick up the trash. So I mean, you know, you got people coming out there yeah. for, and I mean, that costs a lot of money. Oh yeah, like, oh, yeah. and it's a lot of work. And well, I mean, you saw how much work was involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, and uh, so I thought, well, man, I hate to be this guy, but I got to charge them now. Oh. You know, if they, they can't, you know, they don't come. Sorry, but I guess you don't make anything off of them as they don't come. That's all for the charity. So mm -hmm. between Joey's ride and that ride, we're we're doing pretty good. We're we got about thirty grand raised this year. That's we, awesome. Jeep for Joey raised a little over. Uh, probably 25 and then joey's ride was right at five or six so i mean then jeff's ride so what jeff does so kind of us three guys joey simpson jeff bryant and myself we it's not that we do anything special but we just kind of host three different jeep events and jeff takes care of all the coats in jackson county so like um all all any any elementary school, he goes to all the principals, and they turn in any kid that needs a coat in all the elementary schools. And what we're finding is that there's a shit ton of coat drives. Wow. Okay, so, and that's what, honestly, and I mean, I, you know, we're just talking candidly, but because you were a part of it, and Bo's a part of it. But, I mean, you know, the thing, even with Jeeping for Joy, some of the uh, the issues 
that I see with it is, hey, I think it's great. I think kids are getting Christmas. I think it's wonderful. That's why we started the whole deal. Mm -hmm. But what I'm personally seeing is that we could probably do – now that we're making the money that we are, we could probably do something, maybe maybe keep it Christmas-related, but it might not be the way that we have, you know, because – there's, there's a lot of help out there for Christmas. Yeah, you, you know, and I mean, even, even gear grinders, they do a great job with their sure. with their toy drive. And I mean, you know, there's there's so many of us that are doing a lot. And I mean, I'm not saying I want to get away from that. I'm just saying, like, hey, I, I'm trying to help make it better. You know, I don't no. I don't want to just do it because that's what we're supposed to do. And what else is needed? Is what you're yeah, to find like, out. what yeah. else? Yeah, and so I mean, Grant Maston, uh, the high school football player, he donated the last two or th the last three years. He has taken care of all the shoes <laughs> for all these kids. So I mean, he usually goes out and raises enough money that he buys all the kids' shoes. Wow. Any, I mean, it, I can't, that's awesome. I think it's three or four hundred pairs. And that's this, awesome. this is a June. So he started this, I think, as a sophomore. And he, I mean, can you imagine that? That's that's I, I, think, I think that's outstanding. Sophomore but that's a lot of, and he started and he, that then. And he's and, it, and it's like uh, I think it's called. Oh shoot, Melissa's going to kill me. Tackles for tots, yeah. And he donates X amount of dollars wow. for every tackle that he got. Well, hell, he had twenty five tackles Friday night. You know, <laughs> so so him and his him and his mom, I think uh, they they help and they raise the money. He takes care of all the shoes. So in December he'll say, hey, how many shoes are, are on your list? So what I'm saying is with Jeff's money and all that, I mean, man, you, you could really do something. Hey, Christmas is fine. I may continue. Yeah. You know, we might continue to do Christmas. But I'm not really doing that anymore as far as the – I handed that off to Jaffe. So then the money that we raise goes to Jaffe. We're all part of Jaffe. And then they, they take care of the toy drive. But So I guess it might not even be my call anymore. But um, – so yeah, but Jeff he he does a great job, and, and Joey does a great job. Joey's ride was huge. What we'll to get you at that in some form or fashion? Because I mean, man, I truly have just never. I mean, people just raved about it. Like and that's why I was like, I gotta get this guy on the podcast because I I've just never seen that. I've been around a shit ton of events, dude. That's awesome. And I mean, I've never had people like purposely coming up. Hey, that barbecue guy, get him back. And I'm like, you know, shit. And that's why you guys good. ask, why do I do it? That's why I do it. You yeah. know. Yeah. Um, what else makes you feel better than having guys yeah. talk to you? you know, they like, said man, the that's, same thing about Richard. You know, the taco awesome. guy. Yeah, yeah, man, good he, friend of ours. Man, he was great too. His tacos yeah. were delicious. <laughs> they, they, they do put out a good mean, you know, mean taco. I love their chicken stuff, man. Their their chicken stuff taco. He was good, another so. guy. He was just happy go lucky as hell. Oh yeah, he's good people. Yeah, is he O Kill too? Yeah, he's down there in O Kill. Um, I think he's also going in in and out of Wellston as well. Okay. Um, he's been working with the mayor out there in Wellston. Um, doing some things there. Okay. So yeah, we uh, I loved Richard. He's great people. So you so. knew him before? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, See, he's, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know either one. Of them. He, he's new. Uh, he he's about two months, maybe three months, going into doing this. Okay. Um, so he he had stopped by and uh, I gave him some some info and yeah. tried to help him and got him and did you know, he say um, how he did it to event? He did not. I, I, didn't I haven't. I, you know, he him and how he keep missing each other. Would yeah. You know, drop a message and you know. Somebody said he sold out. So he he may have. I know we sold out. You know, pretty. I think it was what nine or ten o'clock when we were Saturday, Saturday night. Yeah. Um, and they'd only I mean, been back for two or three hours at that point. So yeah. So right as soon as uh, the concert started, you'd, you'd oh yeah, we were we were done. Um, yeah. I think we went through we went through some meat that night. We so how did actually, you actually actually when I got my sandwich, you was already out of bread, so you like toasted some I, I, a bun or something. I don't, maybe that's what you do. I don't know. Uh, so we use a Texas toast. We toast our Texas oh, okay. toast. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's okay. Maybe that's what it was. So that's so my probably, wife went okay. and got it because I was on a walker, yeah. you know, yeah. and I was sitting over there. Ate the crap in his hell. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was like, go get me one of them barbecue sandwiches. Yeah. So yeah. like that that weekend there, good. how'd you cook? How'd you keep that going? Did you just keep it going for Friday? So Saturday? you know, I was there early. Um, you was. You I was there, yeah. I was there bright and early uh, cooking it. Um, so we the, the, the event was a two day event. Uh -huh. So I cooked the day before we first sat up out there Friday, and then I cooked Friday for Saturday. Okay. So I just kept things rolling and cooking. And you, and you, you, know. you do that a good bit because you're catering a lot of days whenever you correct. Cook. Actually, well, we did. Uh, um, we had uh, somebody come out and grab two pork butts. From while us out there. there, while we were out there, so um, yeah, we uh, we just try to stay rolling, yeah, um, and try to meet everybody's needs if we, you know, if we possibly can, yeah, um, yeah. That's what would be the tough part is just where's your smoker going to be? There you go. You know, 
I mean, so are, do you? You probably take it with you everywhere you go, though. Don't you? We do, um, and we're going to partake this year uh, in the Apple Festival. Uh, so we are going to be set up up there. Um, where right here, I, I'm not sure exactly where we're going to be at. Uh, we haven't got our spot yet. Um, we're still working with Big O Entertainment uh, on that. Okay. So yeah, we're working yeah. with those guys. Um, but we will be out there. We will be serving our pork, our brisket. Um, I'm going to do bologna. So awesome. if you haven't had the bologna, you guys got to get out there and try that out, too. I want to so, try it. I'd say so. you'll be down here on Main Street. I'd say you'll be on um, – I'd say you'll be down there either by the KOP or the uh, West Banco down in that area. Maybe I don't know. I, well, this was brought up once in a meeting. Well, I, now I don't know where I don't know where you'll be, but I, I think well, in that region. Well, Bud put me in a good spot now. <laughs> I, yeah, I tried. I thought you should have took all them booths. Uh, so yeah, they asked us uh, about the Rotary Club booth mm-hmm. uh, yeah. right there by the the corner yeah. pub, um, but they were trying to figure out the smoker. Um, the smoker being on site just is uh, it's a huge impact. People see ability. that they smell that, and that, I mean that's what draws the attention. It is, yeah. and um, I agree. I, that's a and I, and I love it to be out there for people to see. You know, if they're paying attention and they look at you for a little bit, it's it's not just yeah. easy to put. But that know. would have been hard because, like, you literally would have to go up there and cook. So I'm gonna for the Apple Festival. I will be there every day, all day cooking. Well, you can't leave your cooker. So yeah, it's gonna it's. I will be there. I'll almost be camping out with the thing. So are yeah. you? <laughs> I, I, it's going to be pretty much that's what we're going to be doing. Um, yeah. We're going to be staying up here um, and just working the whole week. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be fired up, rolling all week long. We probably won't stop smoking. Man, so. people underestimate how much work that'd be for you. It's uh, it's going to be a lot. Um, again, we're just wanting to get our name out sure, there. We're sure. wanting, uh, we haven't had a chance yet to get up to Jackson mm-hmm. uh, to put the food out there. So we've got a lot of people that do come from Jackson mm-hmm. down to Oak Hill to come visit us. What's that? This is the 80th year. Yeah. So you should have so. – usually 60,000 is the attendance. There's another thing. Like I've talked to some business owners down here. I mean, not to, I'm not trying to talk about festival shit, but they don't, they don't like it. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you got 60,000 people coming in front of your doors. I mean, now a lot of them do. You know, like Pete, yeah. Pete yeah. does really well. You know, but like your retail shops, they don't like it because they say it shuts their business down. I get yeah. that. I do get yeah. it. But at the same time, like, I mean, you got 60,000 people in Jackson. That's – that's you know ten times the population. Like you ought to be. So, so you got me curious. I mean, what about the the rotary booth and stuff there? They're they, gone. Oh, they are. Yep. Oh, they, it was in the paper. Well, I don't read the paper. Rotary and uh, Lions are both there understaffed. They couldn't renew the so the fish sandwiches and the uh, or the chick. I think it, what Lions do chicken noodles. I can't remember. They were telling me what they rotary were. Rotary did the. Uh, they were right here. Yeah, they had the uh, uh, pepperoni like pizza roll, rolls, pizza rolls, and, and stuff the, like yeah, that. Mushrooms. Yeah, mushrooms. Yep. Yep, they, none of them are sure. Uh, and see, we, see the the ride company Bates, they they turned down too. They they, so there used to be. Now I, I'm talking way out of turn here, um, but there in my I think there used to be two brothers, and then one of them passed away, and then between that and COVID. They didn't activate like, you know, because, you know, at the beginning of festival season, I mean, you know, you think about it. So, like, they control, like, you know, let's whenever they come into your festival, I don't know about the app festival, but whenever they come into your festival, they will typically control the concessions and everything. Yeah. Like you. Yeah. Okay. So, like, that way they can determine the vibe, I guess, or is that what they're doing? Or They're, want, they're wanting to look. They, they want to look their image. Uh, yeah. They want, their, they want everybody to be very professional out there they yes. want the images everything so but they also want to make sure the cleanliness mm-hmm. you know that everybody's doing and following the health department yeah. guidelines and everything so um certificates in place mm-hmm. fire you know fire stickers you don't see too many like tent so, food not too operations many. like not too many compared to some festivals yeah you know because like if these amusement guys get into these things then they control everything yeah so I mean, just the amount of work that that would be. But anyway, so Bates, they didn't they didn't fire up the whole other crew at the beginning of this thing. So they just didn't have the manpower to get down here. So within the last – kudos to, to those guys that put this together. But you're in September. Yeah. This news does not really hit until like June or July. Okay, so now you got to go <laughs> find an amusement company that's capable of supporting the Apple Festival. That's a big job. You know, they, they scrubbed. And now, so then, not only that, but getting away from the app festival, but another reason why in the, I've heard and I've also read, you know, some of these forums that they don't, like a lot of ride companies don't want to come to Ohio anymore 
because whenever the guy got hurt at the Ohio State ride, I may be completely off on this, but from what I've pieced together, the government came in and then started what they call the Tyler Law, and it was basically just to – it's a safety precaution. Hey, good job. If my kid's going to ride it, I don't want it to fly apart either, right. you know? Right. <laughs> and and – um, so they put in this Tyler law, and I guess it's really hard for amusement companies to come. And I don't know why that's hard. I don't know if that's if, – if it's just a pain. I don't know if it's an expensive permit. I don't know if it's – I know that there's an inspection involved, and I don't know when that is. I don't know if they do it at the festival. I don't know if they do it at the – from my experience with doing festivals, they, they do it right after rides are set up. They After they set the rides up, they come in and inspect the rides. And you can't open um, until they do. And they cannot open those rides yeah. until they're inspected. So, yeah, that's it's, and, it's a tough and, you know inspection. And uh, um, those guys go through a lot to put those rides together. Mm -hmm. You know, they come in bits and pieces, and uh, they, they got a tough job ahead of them. But those inspections is what's you know, key in, in keeping everything safe for everybody to be. And that's how you can do that in Southern Ohio yeah. is, is everybody has to be safe. Yeah. You know, you just can't let just anybody right. come, come in there because it won't, you know. It's a, it's, it's a ton of work. You know, it'll fire up here in a few weeks, so that's in three or four weeks. That's, I usually help build every year at least. Yeah. I'll help build that, yeah. I feel, I feel like I should. I know I probably shouldn't, but I feel like I should. Don't, you know, you ever get that hometown bug? Well, as long as it took you to uh, put that shed together, you got going on out back. I, <laughs> I would think you'd be more of a supervisory role or something. Out there. I'd love that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if we could get some young men at this point. Yeah. We, yeah. Need, we need Coleman. That's what we need. We need Coleman. We need young people. That's yeah. What, you know, that, that is something. I mean, the young guys aren't doing much. I don't True. mean that in a bad way, guys. I, I no, love y'all. I, I agree. But, but uh, when, you know, whenever I was 25, 30 years old, I was a member of a lot of clubs, and I was very active in those clubs. And I think you're seeing the downward trend of these young kids not really being involved with them. Mm -hmm. That's why, I like, Road Rune Lions and them are out, you know. They just, their membership's down. Uh, so, I don't know. Well, I've learned. I mean, so I, I just assumed that, like, you know, for a vendor at the Apple Festival, I just assumed that, you know, all right, we got – four uh, you know uh barbecues barbecue spots left up on you know here's your pick you, you, mm. but that's not the way it is mm. yeah. uh, and you had like he said he's going through the big o or whatever which is the new ride company that's coming in yeah. and they control the concessions so mm. they won't let like and especially if they own a barbecue thing you're probably not getting in right there's a lot of yeah so yeah. they the ride companies will own you know corn dogs popcorn or you know well, you won't candy see, apples or cotton candy you won't see something. the steak booth i bet i think that was bates you oh, won't really? you won't see whatever whatever those two things were on the corners right there on the stage they were the uh, they surrounded the stage yeah because that's where the influx of people are yeah. so you won't see those ones and there was a there was something else that they i'm not mm, i don't know i hate to talk out of turn but You're right i don't know i don't know what all they had but i think all those were like house house deals so now you know the stage and the, and the so the wooden things are all local like right a, you know everything else is local and then he'll be local and i'd say they'll they'll try to give you a setup that promotes that yeah you know typically they're pretty good about that you know so yeah we were working with a couple guys local, local i guess with uh jaffe mm -hmm. um you know and then that's where i was directed to to go mm -hmm. with uh the big o so i yep. um, got in touch with them got a contract in so um, we're happy to be sure to be part of it. Sure, um, I'm looking forward to going, you being here. Going to be going to be tough, and we're looking forward to being in Jackson. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to having everybody come out and just experience a you mm -hmm. know some good good old barbecue. Well, what else going on, boys? We've been at it a minute. We've been at it about an hour and some. I, I ain't got nothing. I'm trying to heal, man. That's trying all I'm to heal. Doing. Yeah, you're doing good. You're walking good. Yeah, I'm, I'm walking. Yeah, um, I started physical therapy last week, three days a week. So did you? That's yeah. always tough on that physical yeah, therapy it's stuff. Tough. It's they they're, not, up? they're not doing a whole lot either. And that's, it's, you know, of course, when you sat there and not, oh. I had non weight bearing on my left leg for six weeks. Oh, man. So, uh, you got to work that thing out, man. Yeah. You got to, does it hurt? It's sore. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's sore. I, pain, I, no gain, Bo. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm hoping it's sore just because I haven't used it and after the surgery and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's not the same pain that I had before surgery. You hope you, it's good sore. Yeah. I yeah. swore my ACL about five years ago. And still to this day, from doing physical therapy, I probably didn't work it enough 
and when I'm walking downstairs, I can experience, you know, a little bit of pain mm-hmm. still. And I just, that, that tightness, you know, but just probably getting that thing stretched out for yeah. yourself and continuing to work on it. Um, you should be back to a hundred percent, you know, I hope, well, it you guys are old. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mind it. I've never felt so good about my chubby yeah. in my life. Well, my God, I ain't got nothing to do right Back. Well, him and I probably did a lot of manual labor. Well, yeah, <laughs> hey, I can't help that, boys. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't hate the player. Yeah. Hate the game. That, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I didn't mean for all that to happen. Yeah, right. It just did. Uh, I've, had, I've had a good weekend, man. I uh, played two great parties this weekend. Uh, for some, for like you know buddies, I I realized that was fun. Had uh, Brenda Lemon turn sixty. Happy birthday, Brenda! Uh, and I was out to Stan. You know Stan and Brenda, probably. Who? Stan and Brenda Lemon. Hmm. You don't know. Come on. She turned sixty. Played out there by their pool. But uh, what'd you get into this weekend? Anything? Not much. You're still down, ain't you? I'm still down. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't done much. So. Well, how long do you think it'll be before you're ready to go play? Well, I I don't go back to the doctor till October twentieth. Wow. So I still ways away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, t- still, you're a month, almost two months. Well, away. I mean, it, it, a week ago Friday is when I just got released to start physical therapy. Yeah. So you, you know, so and he told me it would at least be a month of physical therapy before I was able to, you know, even. And I, I'm I'm technically supposed to still be using a walker to help me walk. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, they haven't even weaned me off of that do a cane or anything yet. You know. Yeah. Which is the next step. So, um. You know, I don't know. I don't. I don't. Huh. Hopefully, it's sure. when I get done, I'm all healed up and yeah. no pain. So. Ready to go. Yeah. All right. Well, got anything else you want to say? Where can they find you on Facebook, Instagram? Uh, Facebook. No Instagram. Just Facebook. Uh, Smoke a bus barbecue. Got to get I, the I'm, I'm working on it. You know, I'm still grand. learning all that, all this social media. They do it for the so grab, man. Got to do it. But uh, yeah, we're going to work our way onto there. Um, you can find us on the social media again. Uh, Smoke and butts barbecue. At Facebook. At and, Facebook. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, 414 North Front Street. That's correct. Oak yeah. Hill, which is go right downtown. And it's Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Tuesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Thursday. <laughs> Tuesday, Thursday. I was thinking about your work days. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. There you go. From 10, 10 a.m. till sold, sold out. out. Till and sold you're out. typically not there at, at dinner. Yeah. We, we haven't get, made we it. We've got to get to dinner, dude. We're, we're, uh, so we're working on some things coming up. Okay. Um, we've got some things in the mix. And uh we will uh, keep everybody posted uh, right. as to what we got working out. So if you don't watch Pudge, he's gonna have you down there like cooking stuff all night. Well, uh, yeah. You know? Well, I was going to, my God, you only got two chances to <laughs> to feed people lunch yeah. and dinner. And yeah. Your clothes. What? Are, we got to get your clothes. <laughs> he sold out. Well, we got to cook more. Yeah, we got to cook more. That's yeah. it. That's uh. So yeah, the things that we're working on is uh trying to or at least to have be a spot able where to, they could come get it. To be able to do that. Yeah, we're um. We're also working on those kind of things, trying yeah. to get be able yeah, to take are. orders, phone calls, mm-hmm. things like that, so uh, the school people can get things and come over and snag it. So we can get things. On there? It is, it is six one four two eight four twenty six forty two. Okay, so now, you, can the people swipe a card when they get down there? Yes, sir. We do. We take uh, everything. Attaboy. Cash is always king, you, but we do I, take cards. But you know. I, I'm, I'm terrible anymore. I, I hardly carry cash. At yeah. all. I mean, I've yeah. always got my card with yeah. me. And, and I think uh, cash should be. I don't think cash can. You just got to go to the bank with it. Yeah. You know. Well, I guess you don't. But <laughs> yeah. you know. But I mean, I always thought that just created a lot more work. I'm a card guy. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a card. We use a square. We do. We do. We use Square. Yeah, I like Square. It's easy. It's easy. It's yeah. so easy. Yeah. yeah, and you can do it off of any Apple device. Anything. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we work off our Androids, so. Oh, uh, you yeah. got it on Android? Yeah. I never did yeah. use one on Android. Yours is iPhone, isn't it? I got an iPhone. Yeah. And did it messes it? up. The the new Androids don't come with the uh, the aux. Well, iPhones have so, it for years. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's a pain. It's been uh yeah, it's been difficult. We didn't know that. I didn't think to even ask that. You know, when we got our first time in five years we got a new phone and yeah. you know, we finally upgraded Boys. and was, man. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've told you. I went and I bought a brand new Bose sound system for me to play live out of you know i had i knew i was playing massey i was supposed to play at 50 west brewery last night but they canceled it because that big beach party did you see that yeah. big beach party there? yeah so i went and got this bose system and it, it just checked me up on like we forget sometimes how old we are and like how quick technology is moving so you know when i was playing music all the time i had a big trailer and everything and i packed all my stuff and i mean it was a lot of work you've seen oh, you've yeah. seen me do and Dude, now I mean, I mean, I'd have to get there an hour. I would usually make sure I was in there within two hours of being there just to get set up. 
Now, with the same amount of sound in this Bose, I literally can make one trip. That's packing my guitar, stool, mic stand, and this sound system on a backpack. And it get, and it's all Bluetooth, no wires. Wow. I was set up both nights in under five minutes. <laughs> Holy cow. And that stool popped. Yeah. Microphone ran. It's all wireless. It's bumping your gums to somebody real bumping quick. Bumping my gums to somebody real yeah. quick. Yeah. Oh, I roasted Massey. <laughs> oh, I can't oh, yeah. I can only imagine. It was great. It was great. But man, I mean, you know he loves you, but he know he, he, all, he hates to see you show up. <laughs> well, he invited me. Oh, I know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know he loves you, right? Yeah. Or he wouldn't have been there. But yeah. uh, but I'm sure that like every time he sees, you, he's like, oh, what's he going to say? Oh, now? Yeah, he don't <laughs> yeah, he don't know. Yeah, we had a good time, but man, I mean, and this. So what? Uh, my point with all this is, we was talking about you know cash debit card and all that stuff man i think anytime in a business that you can get more digital friendly you better do it because it's i mean i went from a trailer a 10 a six by 10 trailer to now i can fit it all in the back seat of my jeep and it's the same sound that's awesome you know and it's like wow man that's that's unreal how i mean dude we used to pack so many heavy speakers (laughs) those speakers would weigh 100 pounds and they were Oh, just like big blocks. I mean, that gets old. You know, that just that's a that's a heavy back. You're what you're doing right now is a just a back breaking shit. Yeah, you know, split yeah. especially he's splitting the wood. <laughs> this cat split everything. Yeah, right, stock of the paper towels. Wood. At least I'm sitting down. You know, I'm sitting yeah. down. But. Do you do it in chunks? I do. I just take piece by piece, and I just sit there and I split. I mean, it splits pretty easy. Yeah. I mean, you got to move that sledge a little bit. But other than that, I mean, it's not nothing not too big, bad. not too bad at all. It keeps me in shape, you know. Because yeah, you yeah, big guy. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to do that shit, I'm, man. That wood business, that ain't no joke, boys. Oh, yeah. Did you ever get that tree you ate now? Did you ever get you worked on a tree there all year? Oh yeah. <laughs> Every yeah, time I call up, I finally gave up and went and got my neighbor's wood splitter, man. He always yeah. I always got that buddy. This was cutting on a tree, you know, it's like, man, how long are you gonna cut on something? I mean it was a it was a huge old white oak, you know. Yeah. And I, I was like, you know, I started cutting it up, started splitting yeah. and I thought I'm gonna do this in my you know, my free time, you know. Then all my free time was gone to like cutting and splitting this tree. <laughs> Right, I, mean, I didn't have a wood splitter. I had a wood mall, oh, you know. And oh man! Oh, and I'm talking big chunks oh. of wood, you know. And it, you just you hammer on it, and you hammer on it. So I went and got one of them spikes, you know, and started. It. And next thing I know, my neighbor's like, "Won't you come get this wood splitter?" Yeah. And I was like, "Nah, Game I'm changer. good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good." Funny, I was like, "Hey Tim, come borrow your wood splitter." He's like, "Absolutely." You know, so I'm tired of hearing you peck on that. Yeah, right. yeah you're man. waking me up over there on Saturday. When I first so. moved out to the house, we took out a big old tree, and I cut on these, I, or I took out like fifty trees and i remember i started into that wood pile and boy i had that wood ball and i swung at some bitch all late summer early fall and had me a big old pile of wood you know and then I, I for somehow i ended up getting a cord of wood and or like a pickup truck and i saw what like 60 bucks was compared to what i had just did and i was heartbroken i was like my god i've been cutting on here all summer i got a pickup load yeah i was like it's awful yeah. so i buy mine I, you know who else has got the wood bug right now Oh, yeah, you do. Who? Travis. Oh, yeah. Well, My it, God. Yeah, he don't even burn wood. I know. <laughs> yeah. He's plum- We got a buddy that's got to be a piece of property. He is plum tore I up. Mean, he, has, he has no intentions to burn wood. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm planning on putting in a wood boiler. You know what I mean? And, and He's cleaning up his woods, and I'm like, for what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, bless his heart. I mean, he, he gives a lot of that wood to, you know, some older people and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, that's good. You know, that's so good. He's, he's got And he's cleaning it up. He's cleaning these woods but up and stuff, but he enjoys doing that. I that's mean, that's, what he said. That's what. That's, that's tough work, away. though. That's that, tough work. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he he you know he gets away. That's his getaway. Yeah. You know, so I mean, but he's bought a couple chainsaws. He's got oh, he spent a, a fortune. He, he, bought, he, <laughs> bought, he bought a skid steer. <laughs> He's bought this thing that like splits the wood on the front of the skid. Oh wow! Oh yeah. I give him six months, he'll have a skitter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think? No. Those big old rig pulling in there. Oh, I give it six months, and we've got a Listen, tractor trailer and a skitter. I'm out there. Burn some of that wood. I'm done. I'm done cutting on Travis right oh, now. Oh, I told him he's supplying the Gillum house this year. Yeah. I said, I know you got it. I said, I buy it every bit you got you know, for us. And yeah. I think Dad's going to use him. I think Dad's going to go down there and get all his stuff. So. He's yeah, play. no, bless his heart, man. He he enjoys doing it. <laughs> he that, say, well, that, you know, and, and you know, I've got other things I do, you know, but that's that's what he does, yeah. man. I mean, oh, I know. I, I was when he that wants way. something to do. He goes up there and messes around. So, do you like to work in the wood? Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't mind. hate it. I, I don't mind. It's you. 
I don't mind cutting wood and, and splitting wood yeah, and stuff like that. I, I kind of enjoy it, you know. But uh, like on that big tree, it became monotonous on that thing. Yeah, so yeah, I get that. I was glad to get Tim's wood splitter up there for a while. So. I don't mind cleaning up. Yeah, yeah. I don't, but I don't want to get into wood business. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. I yeah. don't mind cleaning up a mess, but I don't want to get in the wood business. It's a. Uh, you have a hard time I, finding wood? Uh, not right now. So we've uh, we um, shop with uh, Leonard. Um, I don't oh, know yeah, if you know yeah, Leonard. Yeah. Yep, Dennis Leonard. Um, he he supplies me with all my wood. I've always got um, wood. So yeah, he's yeah. he's got plenty of it. Always. So. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, and that's the thing. You know, like I don't, I don't, I usually go to Leonard's. You know, yeah. my buddy's doing it this year, so I'm going to you know get it yeah. off him, but. You know, that's what I told – my dad used to be one of those guys, and he used to try to beat you up on – not beat you up on price, but he wanted to find the cheapest yeah. deal on wood, and who don't? And I was like, hey, man, I don't care if it's cheap. I want them to have it. Yeah, I just want it there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, these guys, the reason that if they're too cheap, they won't be in business next year. Yeah, and that was you the know? thing you were asking earlier about the uh, the cherry wood or the peach wood mm-hmm. or something like that. Or, You're kind of at the mercy of them, then. Yeah, so, you know, it's a, it's a consistency issue with yeah. – but yeah, I would love to do that, though. I think yeah. that, that's a great idea. Um, something I thought about doing, but just, yeah, just having like a certain day or first Saturday yeah. of the month, yeah. peach smoke, man. Them like them, uh, what was it, Paul Paul beers, and mm-hmm. you know, like even apple beer. You know, I yeah. mean, look there, apple beer. I mean, you know yeah. that that would be, would be like, well, I don't like the hickory, but I like it's just another yeah. option. Yeah, yeah, you know, because man, sometimes like you're right, man. That smoke sometimes is, dude. Uh, there ain't nothing worse than laying in bed at night and feeling like your throat's on fire. Yeah. yeah. And that's a lot of times that smoke. You know, and and I think I think a lot of the, some of these people too. And, and and you know, I don't know. I don't know my smoking business, but there's some like liquid smoke. I think that yeah. these people they have. will they will they'll, they'll inject their meat or put and, it in the rub or something and, like and that. And I think and, if they get too much of that, then it's yeah. not it's bad news. Yeah. So I did that on beef jerky one time. Uh, I did beef jerky in the oven, and I used that uh, or deer jerky, mm-hmm. and I used that liquid smoke. And boy, it was just whew, oh yeah, yeah it's. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, if you're doing anything on a smoker, you don't need that, you know. Right. Um, and and uh, it's just overpowering. Yeah, and that's what you don't want. But uh, all right, well, hey, look him up, folks. Smoking Butts Barbecue at Facebook at uh, 414 North Front Street, Oak Hill, Ohio, right? That's it. Yeah, the phone number again? 614-284-2642. You heard him. Look, look us up, like, and subscribe on our button. Uh, I don't know who we got next, but uh, hopefully Chad and Tyler will be back. So we'll see you soon. See you. Later. Thanks.